This year, Roy began the reading of our passion narrative in church. We're going to continue it now on the hour every hour on this YouTube channel until our final reading at 3 p.m. The readings are taken from John's Gospel, chapters 18 and 19, if you wish to follow them at home. Yesterday, on Maundy Thursday, we relived the story of the upper room, of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples and of his challenge to them and to us to imitate his love. It was an experience that the disciple Peter found both uncomfortable and bewildering. It didn't seem fitting to him that Jesus, his Lord and Master, should assume the role of a servant. But even more bewildering was Jesus' assertion that one of those at table with them that night would be the one to betray him to the authorities. It was more than Peter could bear and made him ever more determined to declare his own loyalty to the Lord Jesus. Peter was passionately committed to Jesus. He had been the first among the disciples to declare his faith in Jesus. Much of what Jesus had said and taught, Peter found impenetrably hard to understand. But he trusted Jesus. He had given up his job and walked away from his family for Jesus. He had been with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration and he had caught a glimpse of the glory of God in him. It would have been impossible for Peter to imagine that he would ever deny Jesus. But something was about to happen that would turn Peter's world upside down. The journey to Jerusalem, which had started with so much promise, was going to end not with a coronation, but with a cross. No wonder it was to Peter who Jesus had said, what I am doing now, you do not understand. Maybe there is something about Peter that stands for all of us who start out so well on our own Christian journey. Our faith in Jesus was everything to us. We can never imagine a time when anything could be more important. For Peter, there was a moment when it all became too hard. Maybe for us, there was a moment when it all became too hard, or too exhausting, or too monotonous. Maybe it's not been one moment, but many moments over the years that have eroded our first love for the Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear now, the account of that moment when for Peter, it all became too hard. Let us reflect upon that moment in the light of what we know now. For Jesus was to bring Peter back to him, forgiven and fired with love to continue that journey with him. Here, at the foot of the cross, if a way back is what we also need, then here is where that way begins. And so Andrew will bring us our reading. Thank you. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus replied, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in synagogues or in the temple where all Jews congregate. I have said nothing in secret. Why are you questioning me? Question those who heard me. They know what I said. 
When he said this, one of the police standing near him struck him on the face. Is that the way to answer the high priest? he demanded. Jesus replied, If I was wrong to speak what I did, produce evidence to prove it. If I was right, why strike me? So Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, as Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, Are you another of his disciples? But he denied it. I am not, he said. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, insisted, Did I not see you with him in the garden? Once again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a cock crowed. From Caiaphas, Jesus was led into the governor's headquarters. It was now early morning, and the Jews themselves stayed outside the headquarters to avoid defilement, so that they could eat the Passover meal. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charge do you bring against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have brought him before you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jesus, Jews answered, We are not allowed to put anyone to death. Thus they ensured the fulfilment of the words by which Jesus had indicated the kind of death he would die. Pilate then went back into his headquarters and summoned Jesus. So you are the king of the Jews, he said. Jesus replied, is that your own question or have others suggested it to you? Am I a Jew, said Pilate? Your own nation and your, their chief priests have brought you before me. What have you done? Jesus replied, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If it did, my followers would be fighting to save me from the clutches of the Jews. My kingdom belongs elsewhere. You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, King is your word. My task is to bear witness to the truth. For this I was born, for this I came into the world, and all who are not deaf to truth listen to my voice. Peter said, Pilate said, What is truth? With those words he went out again to the Jews and said, For my part, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release one prisoner for you at Passover. Would you like me to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted back, Not him! We want Barabbas! Barabbas was a bandit. 